Hi, I'm Jeff Baker from The Oregonian, and this is Mark Mohan. We're back with another review of this week's movies. Um, there's two big studio release movies playing at every Regal Theater in town, and if you go to either one, you're going to be out of luck because neither of them are very good. Uh, Mark saw the Sean Penn movie, The Gunman. I saw di the Divergent series, colon, Insurgent, the second in the uh, teen dystopian fantasy starring Shailene Woodley and a bunch of other um, sweating young actors. Uh, I'll uh, give a brief synopsis of Divergent, colon, Insurgent. It's not very good at all. It is really a um, Hunger Games knockoff without any of the originality of the Hunger Games. Uh, the, the Hunger Games uh, with training wheels is how I refer to it. Um, Shailene Woodley is uh, tortured and conflicted after the events of the first movie. She runs around a lot. Um, Miles Teller uh, provides some you know, glimmers of comic relief, but this is really another grim, uh, crawling through rubble, wearing dark clothes, different factions. Uh, Kate Winslet is the uh, head villainess. You know, she's sort of the Cruella de Vil of the uh, piece. And um, overall, you could wait for Hunger Games 4 and uh, not miss a beat. Mark, any reaction to that? Or you want to just talk about uh, John Penn and his uh, assassin his, reluctance? His, his American sniper with a conscience. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it sounds like uh, these two movies are examples of two trends that we've had enough of, the young adult dystopian future society thing with Hunger Games and Divergent, and now with the Sean Penn movie, The Gunman. We have yet another of these sort of uh, what they're calling Jerry action movies with uh, these 50-ish male stars uh, following Liam Neeson's lead and uh, cracking skulls and, and uh, you know, firing with abandon in these adventures. Uh, this one, Sean Penn, uh, yeah, as you say, he's a, he's a gunman. Right, he's a man with a gun, uh, a large in, gun, a large gun, a very large gun. At the at the beginning of the movie, uh, he it's set mostly in Africa and Europe. He's in the Congo at the beginning of the movie and and commits this assassination. Has to flee, then years later finds himself pursued by the mysterious forces behind uh, the killing that he was uh, hired to do. Um, Sean Penn is wasted in this movie, uh, even though he co-wrote it and, and produced it, so he has no one else to blame. Um, as well as a lot of other great actors, Idris Elba shows up and is given nothing to do. Ray Winstone, the British actor, Mark Rylance, uh, who's a, a great stage actor and, and just plays this sort of snidely whiplash villain here. Uh, so, you know, it's lots of uh, overdone violence, lots of meaningless uh, jibber-jabber, and uh, I would say skip it entirely. And uh, Oscar winner Javier Bardem is... Uh, right, that's right. Yes, another another Oscar winner, in addition to Sean Penn, who's in this movie. And Javier Bardem is, seems to be drawing on when he played the, the Bond villain with his this sort of unhinged, uh, drunken performance um, that's maybe the hammiest thing in the movie, and that's kind of saying something. Um, Mark, I saw a couple of Liam Neeson action movies in the last year that I liked. Um, a Walk Among the Tombstones mm -hmm. and then this uh, Run All Night, which is, uh, I think, running all night out of the mu multiplexes right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought they were both pretty good. What do you think the problem was here? I think part of the problem is that Sean Penn is a guy who, he, he feels like he wants to bring some sort of social consciousness to this. It's got this African setting and this sort of sense of a critique of Western meddling in, in the Congo, but it doesn't go anywhere with that and, and it feels at odds with just the sort of mindless action aspect to it. Um, well, just uh, in case you were worried that we were, uh, you know, just haters here and, and haters going to hate, um, we do each have a, uh, a pick that you can see as counter-programming for this weekend. Mine is the charming uh, John Borman movie, Queen and Country. Um, it's a sequel to Hope and Glory, uh, both autobiographical movies about Borman's uh, young life. This one, he is a uh, conscript in the British Army uh, during the Korean War era. It's, it's really well acted, a, a fine, fine movie. I, uh, I recommend it wholeheartedly. Mark, what's your pick?
Uh, well, my pick would be uh, going to see one of the great science fiction movies of all time, 2001, A Space Odyssey, which is playing in 70 millimeter at the Hollywood Theater this weekend. Um, I hate to even talk about it because I think all the shows are sold out, but you can, you can double check that. Um, the, the Hollywood has just installed a 70 millimeter projection capability and uh, an epic uh, movie like this. It's, it's the only way to really see it and truly appreciate it, so it should be a great time. The HAL 9000 and 70 millimeter. Who can, uh, who can stay away from that? Well, thanks, and we'll be back next week with uh, some more movies.